Hey everybody, um, we are getting ready to start uh, one of our favorite things to do. Um, we are going to be writing personal narratives, um, and it's going to be different because we're going to be doing it online, but um, it's still really cool because essentially you guys are going to get to write a story that is something that is true that happened to you. So your teachers, we love reading these because it gives us a little bit of insight about like a neat or interesting event that happened in your life. Um, so the purpose today, I'm just going to go over what is a personal narrative? What are we going to be doing with this unit? Um, what's it going to look like? And then um, at the end, we'll have a couple questions just to see if you kind of understand what a personal narrative is. Um, so a personal narrative is a short story about a small moment in your life that left an impact. So it's, it's, you're going to choose an event that taught you a lesson um, because, you know, every good story has a theme and every good story has, you know, a lesson that the reader can learn. Well, the lesson that you learned will essentially be the theme of your personal narrative. Um, so a good personal narrative follows the plot diagram, okay? Um, and we're going to go over, we're going to review that here in a, um, in a lesson or two. Um, but it's going to follow the plot diagram, so it's going to tell a story in order. But the first thing you're, wanna, you're going to want to do with your personal narrative is you're going to want to start with a hook. So you can start by um, using a quote, but you wouldn't want to use just like a quote that you found online. You could use a quote that one of your characters or like a family member or... Um, you know, who else would play a character in your story, maybe a friend or a teacher or whatever. So you could use a quote that they would have said in the story and that could hook your reader. Um, you could start with a little a little story like set the scene. Um, so you want to make sure that you grab your reader's attention and make them really want to jump right into your story. Think about it. When you read a book, you don't want to wait until it's like page 100 to really get into it. So in your narrative, you don't want to wait until it's like chapter or paragraph three or four until your reader's like, oh, okay, I can read this. You want to grab them right away with your story. Um, so I'll teach you or we'll teach you how to do an introduction and then your short story will start from there after your introduction. So you're going to set the scene and then you'll tell the story in order. Um, that is super important with a narrative so that way your reader can feel like they're there with you and they understand the storyline. Um, like I said, it's going to teach a lesson. You're going to have a theme. What lesson did you learn? And it's going to be effective um, for your reader to know that you are reflecting on this moment. Um, it's going to have details from your mind. So what that means is we are going to do a little mini lesson on sensory details. And so to make your reader feel like they're there, we're going to talk about... Um, you know, what smells did you smell? What things did you see? What, what, you know, did you eat anything? And don't just say I ate cookies, but you could say like I ate the buttery, warm chocolate chip cookies. Well, that makes me want a chocolate chip cookie. Um, so you're going to be specific and kind of make your reader want to be in the moment with you. Um, you're going to have characters. Like I said, those are going to be your real people. So your friends, your family members, your teachers, whoever was there for your moment. Um, and they're going to share dialogue. You're going to use strong feelings and emotions, and you're going to use strong word choices. So like I said, we're going to do some mini lessons with you kind of in this format. Hopefully, um, we're going to go over sensory details, which I just talked about. We're going to talk about adding figurative language into our story. So those are your similes, metaphors, hyperboles, onomatopoeias. So you're going to try to include those. Um, we are going to talk about using dialogue and why dialogue is important. Um, you're going to have characters, so they're going to need to have a conversation. Um, hopefully you can remember something similar to what they said. If it was an event that happened 10 years ago, you're not going to remember every single word that these people said, but you can kind of craft something that makes sense. Um, we're also going to talk about strong word choice. And so what that means is you're going to take um, a certain word and you're going to replace it. So instead of saying she said, you would say she exclaimed or just change it up just to make things more exciting and more elaborate. Um, so we're going to practice with that too. Like we'll give you kind of a boring sentence and then you guys can practice making it more exciting and, and interesting for your readers to read. Okay. Um, the, the last thing we really need to talk about is when you choose your topic for your narrative, you want to make sure that you're choosing a topic that is important, but it's not super broad. Okay, so you don't want to talk about like, oh, my year as an eighth grade student. No, that is way too much. Okay, but if you want to talk about one moment, okay, 
maybe the moment that you heard that you were going to have um, three weeks out um, of eighth grade year, or maybe the um, the eighth grade tailgate that you loved, or something like that. Or you can talk about something not school related. Um, when I did my sample um, a couple years ago, I wrote a sample narrative and I wrote it about my grandma passing away. So it's not always going to be about good stuff, but it doesn't always have to be about bad stuff either. Um, people have written about the times that, you know, they've gotten their pet or uh, maybe they broke a bone or they got into a car accident or they went to a family wedding or um, they a, a, a baby sibling or a baby cousin was born. Um, so there's a lot of different options. Um, that you have, you, you kind of have to think back into your memories a little bit and try to think about, okay, what are some experiences that I've had in my life that have made an impact? Maybe it was an experience, um, maybe gentlemen, it was going to the nursing home or having, um, Jordan Sonnenblatt come. Maybe ladies, it was a self-defense lesson from rocks. Maybe it was something that you learned while you were hanging out with your friends and you realize that how important friendship is, but it has to be that really specific moment, um, so make sure you keep that in mind. It is a small moment, not a broad general story. Okay, that is that is one of the very key things to make sure that we have success with these. Um, all right, as always, we are here for questions, so do not hesitate to ask. Um, like I said, we're going to do a couple mini lessons, and then we're going to do a couple practice. We're going to analyze a sample, um, and we're going to have like a, an outline checklist for you. So as you are writing, you're going to be able to have success because you'll have be able to check back and forth. We will be here to help. Um, and then we'll give you some time to work on your narratives and we'll go over what that specifically is going to look like um, when the time comes. All right. Well, we are here. Don't be afraid to ask us any questions. Bye.